Welcome to the Songwriter Connection, the podcast that delves deep into the art and heart of songwriting. Each week, we gather around the dining room table to uncover the stories behind the songs. We invite you to join us on a journey to the creative minds of the songwriters who shape the melodies of our lives. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. Oh, and I've got to modestly say, the award-winning Songwriter Connection podcast, the Elite Music Awards, said that we are the podcast of the year, and we're proud of that. Thank you so much for making it happen. Applause for that, everybody. Also, congratulations. Also, I should tell you, we're now at the one million worldwide stream. Yes. Oh, man. So thrilled. Thank you so much for that. That's, That's due to you, spreading the word and... And, and saying you like it and commenting and liking and subscribing. We certainly do appreciate you very much. In fact, this Saturday, because this is today, as we, if you're listening as we uh, are releasing this podcast, it's uh, Wednesday, September 25th. This Saturday night, our guests today are also going to be performing. Uh, we're going to have the One Million Stream Party at uh, the Commodore Grill. And we're going to have a lot of these artists that you've heard over the past couple of years on Songwriter Connection performing live. So if you're in Nashville... Commodore Grill in West End in the Holiday Inn is where you want to be. That's a great venue for songwriting. It really is. Well, um, I've got a return guest today, and I'm so thrilled to have Brooklyn Summer back with us today. Brooklyn! Hi! Happy to be here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're going to talk to Brooklyn. We also have uh, my sometime co-host, Scott Barrier. Sometimes. Hi. Hey, Barrier! Good to be here. Good to be back. Yay. The songwriting savant. <laughs> We've got Annie, so, who is Brooklyn's mom. Annie, how are you? I'm good. This is a little scary. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> don't be scared. We're just a bunch of, we know it makes it a little extra scary if we've got Martin Buchanan. And we're not supposed to be paying any attention to him because he's filming this for a, a documentary. Um, and Martin is a great guy. He's written with you too, Brooklyn, hasn't he? He's and good. Yeah. And, and he uh, shot a video for me uh, on my new song that's out there right now. If you haven't heard of it yet, it's called Absalom. And there's an interesting story behind it. And uh, Martin, uh, we're, we're reporting this uh, first day of August uh, here in Nashville. Um, and last night we were in the cemetery uh, filming that video. And that I can't, so I hope you have a chance cool. to see it. That yeah. is so cool. Should be out there by now. Oh, I'm spilling water. Okay. All right. So um, anyway, <laughs> let's talk about Brooklyn Summer because today is Brooklyn's two year anniversary in Nashville. And so it's kind of like, She's two years into a 10-year town, but let me tell you, she's way, way ahead of the game, and we're going to talk about it. Brooklyn, nice to have you back on the show. When you were first here, you were 12. <laughs> I was. <laughs> and, and now you're 14. Man. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's flying. And flying. Amazing, <laughs> amazing stuff that you have done. And as a matter of fact, you also need to know that Tomorrow night, now this would be August 2nd, so we record way in advance. She is headlining her first show in Nashville. How's that for two years into a 10-year town? Did you ever think that was possible? Did you? Did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's even more surprising? The guy opening for you is a big songwriter and artist in this town. Yeah. <laughs> a guy you've written with, uh, Justin Love. He's great, yeah. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> and so this is a full band show for you? It is a full band show. It's really great. <laughs> Who's all in this band? Um, we have Derek Brightwell on the bass. We have Andrea Benz on the electric guitar. She is an amazing guitar she's player, she's Andrea great. Benz. Yeah. Oh, she's man. Great. She's amazing all the way around. She really is. Yeah. So we get, then we got Jenna Kapitsky on the drums. And yeah, Jenna's really also amazing. Wow. They're all great. What a great band. Super nice people. Awesome. I hope you get lots of video of that. Post Thank that you. because I can't be there in person. I'm, so <laughs> I'm really Sorry, bummed. Bro. Yeah. And in Justin's band, before you, uh, Scott Berger will be playing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Justin asked me and uh, Grace Mahar. Oh, uh, she's they, wonderful. They say her Love name her. so many different ways. we got to get Grace uh, on this show. Yeah, she's Dog great. Doggone it, man. She's, oh, she's yeah. so mm. cute. So, yeah, so we're going to do a, a, an acoustic set compared to the full band set. Oh, that's a couple good. guitars Exciting. and free. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a really yeah. special night because everybody's yeah. friends, you know. Mm-hmm. This is everybody you write with, everybody you sing with. Yeah, it's like the little community right there in the oh. one building. All my friends. <laughs> yeah, Radio Sobro's coming. Awesome. The owner's coming. Ralston's coming. Nice. Oh, my oh, gosh. Nice. And I wanted to meet the owners and everything. Ralston's a great guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Radio Sobro, by the way, if you ever want the true sound of Nashville, 
look it up. And uh, they're streaming everywhere. You just get online radio. And it, it is all Nashville artists. And I, I love it. I, I really love that station. And it's, it's like me. It's genre neutral. It's not one particular genre. It is like all of Nashville. Mm-hmm. And you'll, you'll hear a lot of great And the cool thing is songs. it's only Nashville. Mm-hmm. And Nashville Only locals. Nashville, right. Yeah. Nashville locals, yeah. So, And you've been on that, haven't <laughs> yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great station. Ralston's such a great guy. So probably. He really is. You know, not too long ago, I saw you at the listening room, and it was a special Sobro, Radio Sobro show. Listening room is, is like, um, yeah. what, like Bluebird on steroids. I, oh, that I, was I, the moon party. They wish. That was the, yeah. That was the, yeah, they wish. <laughs> they wish. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a blue, Bluebird atmosphere, but a lot a lot more people can fit inside there. Oh, yeah. And if you can't get into the Bluebird, which is so hard when yeah. you come to Nashville. It's so popular. Try try the listening room. Yeah. That's great. But But you, it was Moon Pie sponsored that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I and, got to throw moon pies at people. I was gonna say, I we, know. To, we, we were sitting up in we the balcony. We were too far back. Like, yeah, we were too far away. <laughs> we're like, you needed one of those little like those cannon no, things I they have at the. I one at you guys. But I didn't want to like accidentally hit a like a chandelier and then yeah. it crashes down on everyone. And then you have to pay for it. Say, yeah, you know, I got you. <laughs> Though it would have been an epic moment. It would have been an epic show. moment. It would have gotten me known. <laughs> would have definitely do that. You <laughs> are doing your. You are getting known anyway. Let yeah, me tell you. Yeah. And, and just using that as an example, you were with three pro writers in this town, no. and people with hits. I mean, the guy who wrote uh, "Rock in a Hard Place" for uh, uh, Bradley Zim- uh, Bailey Zimmerman, yeah. and you are with all those people, and you just held your own. Yeah, you did great. And Thank I was so, so proud of you. I'm like, I know her. I know yeah. her. I'm sitting next to her mom. Yeah. You know? Thank you so much. Yeah, you definitely right from up the there very with him. first song. Yeah. The yeah. audience I, was just. I get a text message. What am I doing on stage with these people? Because they're really awesome. Well, and you played it all off. signed, and then there's me. Like, has it been yeah. a mistake? No, it wasn't though. No, you you were fine. You did you did just fine with, yes, with you them did. up there. So made us even all said proud. some funny things. Made the place laugh. It was she great. did. Yes, she did. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're getting so. better at that. Yeah, yeah. it's great. You know, I, I have to tell you. Uh, let, let's start with where you start. You came to Nashville two years ago from. Uh, the L.A. area, right? Yeah. Where, where you were a model and an actress, and you were in movies at a very young age, weren't you? I was, yeah. I did a lot of modeling and acting as well in L.A., but, you know, I always loved music, and it was always my strong suit. Mm-hmm. Acting's great. Yeah. Modeling's great, but music is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it's where the passion lies, right? It is, yeah. You yeah. know, um, in... in, in I'm thinking back on your 12th birthday, was it? That's what I was going to bring up is the reason, like, yeah, tell that story about What did you tell your parents you wanted for your 12th birthday? You know, for my 12th birthday, I said that for my 12th birthday, I want to move to Nashville (laughs) because Lance Carpenter told me to. Lance Carpenter is another great writer. He's an Arkansas native. He wins all those Arkansas CMA awards, but he's written hit songs for Kelsey Ballerini, and he's just a really great guy. And he kind of took you under his wings very early huh? he did he's such a great guy he's super nice he's everyone knows him really. <laughs> he even said you can do some of my songs it, 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 I did yeah and it, like Annie you were telling me the other day and I didn't realize this uh, in, in, to prepare to come to Nashville you learned 45 and you could barely strum the guitar then you've come a, <laughs> you've come a long way you really you have. have I'm gonna you take have. that as a compliment no, oh absolutely very much a, compliment. a very much a compliment you get you hung with all those guys at the listening room yeah she, once again she, yeah guitar wise you, know, you were fine she yeah. practiced a year before we moved to Nashville mm-hmm. on um a one hour set Wow. You know, I was already playing in Nashville before we like really moved here. My That's dad would true. Just drive See? us back and yeah, forth. when was the really? first time? Yeah, when was the first time? How old were you when you first came you were, out to Nashville? You were eight. To check I it was out? Eight years old. Eight yeah. years old. Yeah. I did so, not know that. Yeah. And so. I was singing on Broadway at eight years old with Playing the at Tootsies and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she, she already had a little bit of experience anyway. Wow. She yeah. sang at um the whiskey room with somebody that I don't think is around anymore. It hmm. was the Nashville Spotlight. Oh, yeah. I don't and even they remember called who that and they was. said, we have one spot left. Does Brooklyn want to do it? And I said, sure. And they said, are you sure? that? Because you have to fly across the country just to sing for 20 minutes. Mm. And Brooklyn said, let's do it. But there <laughs> she met somebody in the audience. Who was that? Tommy Neal? Tommy Neal. Tommy Neal, who will come tomorrow from oh. Kentucky, who introduced her to someone on Music Row. Wow. And by... 
On her ninth birthday, she recorded her first three songs on Music Row. Wow. On her tenth birthday, she had her first 45 minute set downtown. Wow. <laughs> so it's all about now. Where the was birthdays. that at? <laughs> huh? That was where at. Was that? that was at. I think it's called Lonnie's Karaoke, and they shut it down so Brooklyn can mm. do a one hour set. Is that something? And they yeah. had a bachelor party and a bachelor party. Maybe? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Printer's Alley. Maybe? Yeah, Printer's Alley. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's yeah. very cool. I remember so, uh, watching Mer- Megan Lindsay singing there, uh, and awesome. she had a nice career. She was uh, on on The Voice and uh, Steel Magnolias, that's awesome. and I remember she was singing up there, and her voice was so raw. And I hand her up, Paul's. <laughs> I, I, she, Brooklyn was singing so fast, and I said, "Why are you singing so fast? Because I just want to get out of here." <laughs> really, a little nervous, so, probably too. So you love the experience, is what you're saying? Oh, what a great! Is that, is that what you're saying? Is that what you're telling us? At such uh, a young age. Yeah. Well, you've come so far since then. You really have. And one of the things I think is so cool, and, and Annie, you, re, you, you left me a big, long message yesterday. and was great. Uh, you said it's the community here in Nashville that's oh. behind you. And it's, it, it, just, it just reminds me that, you know, they say all boats rise with the tide. And you've had so many great mentors and people Thank that you. were here to help you, right? Yeah. It is Not just the, Lance Carpenter, but lots of others. It is the community. In fact, when Brooklyn decided I need to start writing songs, that are not from Lance, and yeah. I would see her in tears. Oh, it almost mm. makes me tear oh. because she would try so hard, but she would say, but now, now I need good songs, and my songs aren't good. Oh. And that's when we met Scott, and we yeah. saw him at the, com- at the Commodore. Commodore. That's I correct. almost fell over laughing because <laughs> he was so funny on stage, and yeah. his songs were so funny, but they were also really good he can so rip your we heart out. When he, wants we to. Up he really to can. And we're like, or make it LOL. Would One you maybe, maybe want to try to write with Brooklyn? And their very first song was so good, and it was them two on the couch yeah. for wow. three hours, and they got the best song out. Oh, yeah, we'll have that to, was some bridges burned themselves. Yeah, we'll have to. Oh yeah, we'll I have like to go that back song. and look at that one. Oh, have yeah. to look at um, that one. Yeah. But it, that, that was a funny night because uh, I remember asking you. What kind of music you want to do, and the, and out of your mouth, and I, I have to paraphrase because I know it's not everywhere. But it's like I don't want that Disney uh, kid bubblegum crap. Yeah, no <laughs> kid stuff. That's right. <laughs> What's what she said? No offense to Disney, but that's what she said. I'm just I'm quoting. I'm quoting, and and I just thought that that's really what endeared me to you. I thought, man, this is a funny kid. And I thought. Yeah, we. I think we'll have we'll have fun creating some songs together and, and, and doing do some cool stuff. And wow. and uh, it and was then just, she met Dave because you yeah, introduced Dave. Well, yep. I remember seeing you. I was running a little um, um, songwriter night at a little keys. place around the corner called the Twelve Keys. It's not there anymore. Mm. Um, but I remember you coming in and playing <gasps> and just blowing us away. I'm like, oh. This girl. Yeah. How old is she? Yeah. (laughs) That's crazy. That was the best place, and I miss it, and everyone in town misses that. It was a cool room. I love the pretzels there. Oh, yeah, I did too. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. So, you recently had an amazing experience, uh, Brooklyn, and I want you to tell us about it. You got to go to Curb Records and record a new song. And um, I just want to hear about the whole experience. What was it like walking in there in this legendary place? Yeah, I went in there with my co-writer, Scott Barry, who's right here, and Michael Hello. J., who's not right here. But, <laughs> yeah, we were brought to Curb Records by Michael, and it's such a cool place. Uh, cool The person vibe. that was recording, he told us all about it, about people he, he's worked with. The uh-huh. song turned out so good. It's so, oh. it's awesome. Yeah, and that's your current single right now, right? Yeah, it's great. And so it, you probably don't mind if we play it. Not at all. But uh, tell them a little bit Mike, uh, about Michael J. Uh, Scott before we do that. Well, Michael J. He's also been has, in this podcast. And a, yeah, an illustrious career. And that's downplaying it. <laughs> uh, he's had songs recorded by Celine Dion, mm. Gloria Estefan. Yeah. Um, his big one uh, where he got his Grammy was with Martika. Toy and Soldiers. they, yeah, they wrote Toy Soldiers. Yeah. And, uh, Eminem. Yep. Eminem and, redid and, it. Yeah. and Eminem re- redid it, and probably I can't imagine how much money he made off. I'm sure, of, he bought that house in Nashville. Uh, oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, he's <laughs> floating on cash after that one. <laughs> so sitting he's on a such pile. a great guy, you know? and you he's just, you yeah, just, you yeah. wouldn't expect one of the guys. That. Yeah. And that's the thing about him; he's a stellar human being. Really and you is. always hope that people that are that successful yeah. are like have their feet on the ground and are just decent people. He's yeah. one of those. So you're he, like, he I'm really glad is. you got all that. 
I'm glad you got all that. You you should have gotten all that because he's just a yeah. nice guy. He's cool. you know, and we've played on the round with him a couple of times. And yeah. to hear him yeah. do Toy Soldiers, and everybody knows that song and they're singing along with him. It's funny, yeah. like watching just the crowd. I like seeing yeah. their faces and they're like, "Wait, Toy Soldiers!" and they look him up on their phone. Yeah. It's funny. Step well, by step. another thing about yeah. Michael is he's the happiest guy you'll he ever is. meet. He's, oh. a he's happy always guy. smiling. He's mm-hmm. so always funny. positive. Yeah, and he's always the biggest clapper in the yeah. room. He's always <laughs> he's, your yeah. biggest fan. No matter who's singing, yeah, he's like, just yeah, he's never. Nice. I was gonna say he's never lost the kid in him. No, no, no that's and great, and and it comes out. And and what what I love about him, and this is how we should all be in the music community industry, is like just the first thing that we should do is love music, mm-hmm. and it's about the music, nothing else, fame, fortune, anything else. It's just our pure love of music, exactly. and that just just comes off of him when you're around him he just loves it. he dances like a little kid and uh, like nobody's watching yeah him. right but but we're watching and so yeah. <laughs> he's like he doesn't care and so yeah. so that that just it, it. being around him is just great that way because it it like reinvigorates it just gives you, you really good vibes it, it does, does. Doesn't it makes it? you yeah. happy and well, smile and as a parent there's some people she's comfortable with and some people she's not uh-huh. but when she's at michael's with scott they're laughing, and he is dancing because I catch it always on video. I mean, I got him, I got him hula hooping at paddle dogs, and he's like, "I know you're gonna use that for something bad." Like, you know, it's just nice to be around happy people. You know. You know, I always thought you have a big voice, and people are gonna uh, gonna, gonna hear it, and they're gonna get an example of this. And we're resting your voice for tomorrow's big show, so we're gonna be playing <laughs> recorded music that you. You know, we've agreed to do that. Um, but they need to hear your voice. You've got this range that is absolutely incredible. And I remember saying, you need something that shows off that range. And boy, Michael J. and, and Scott got the song. Uh, tell us a little bit about the writing of that song and, and how it came about. Yeah, doing now, it's uh, mainly inspired off, you know, I can't remember. Well, not Co- waiting. You write so many like, songs. Cody yeah. Johnson. Yeah, Cody Johnson. Ah. Uh. And oh, no, till yeah, just that's till you can't, right? Okay. Yeah. And other songs like that, uh, Martina McBride, you know, Martina the, those, McBride, yeah, just a bunch yeah. of high belting songs, just yeah. positive songs in general. It's basically about just waiting through your life to do everything you want to do, but you're like, why? Do, I can just do, do it, it now? later. Yeah, I can just do you're it putting later. it off. Don't put it off. Don't it's yeah, it's the whole thing. Do it now. Just right. do it. Do it now. <laughs> do it. Well, let's give it a listen. Do it now. It's Brooklyn <laughs> Summer. On the Songwriter Connection Podcast. This is recorded at Curb Records on Music Row. Living in the fast lane, life moving like a jet plane. Moments fly by so fast. Once they're gone, you can't get them back. We all have hopes, we all have dreams. Don't slow down for anything. It's closer than you think. What you want within your reach Do it now, do it now With every breath you take, make every second count Have you found someone to touch? Have you laughed and danced enough? Have you done something today that makes you proud? Why not do it now? Why not do it now? Got so much on your plate You keep saying one day You're putting things off and yet You only have so many rain checks There's always something new to learn Round every twist and every turn Show the world what you can do Someone might be looking up to you
And I have to tell you, too, there is no auto tune. There is that is just the voice of fourteen year old Brooklyn Summer, and it's absolutely amazing. I love it when you take it up a step like that. It's you know, fun to do. Yeah. isn't that fun to do? First time I heard you do this was at the local, and the, you just brought down the house. Everybody's like, "Whoa!" So the engineer said, "I haven't heard somebody hit those." Since I met a little Martina McBride. Yep. Yeah, you know. That was the comparison. That was the biggest compliment. Wow. That's a huge compliment. Wow. It made it feel super good. Yeah. I oh, bet it did. did. Heck yeah. yeah. Who are some of your idols growing up? Who did you like to listen to? You know, uh, when I was younger, I listened to a lot of Adele. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? She's that great. That comes through. Yeah. That comes through in the ranginess. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's amazing. She's great, but yeah. yeah. Uh, then uh, I also loved Leanne Rimes a lot, her older mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I really like Miranda Lambert, Gretchen oh, yeah. Wilson. A country with an edge. Country rockers, yeah. yeah, female country. Oh, edge. that's good. Yeah. Good stuff. That's a good list. Yeah. I remember there's a story that, um, can we talk about the AGT experience? Is yeah. that all right? Yeah, Is that okay? I'll go with yeah. That. So they were really interested in, in you, and um, you were singing a Gretchen Wilson song that they didn't feel was age appropriate. Yeah, and, yeah, there's that. And, Red and, that and, <laughs> Red that woman. And she went ahead and rewrote it for you so you could sing it on AGT. Yeah. <laughs> it just blows me away. Was your, was your man like... Yeah, yeah, I was freaking out. Yeah. I was like, Gretchen Wilson. <laughs> well, that's, that's, yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing they did so that. So cool. When I heard Gretchen's voice coming over Brooklyn's phone... <laughs> Only a year ago, and yeah. her voice sounded like she was 28. I was blown away. Wow, like she still, sounded so cool. Yeah, she still yeah. sounds yeah. Sounds sounds great. amazing. Did you save that? <laughs> you know, I told her to save it somewhere, and she hasn't been able to find it. But yeah, that's so but, cool. Hey, I got to meet up with her in person, so that kind of you did. It, yeah, it worked. What was that like? It was great. I watched uh, her in her own writer's job with a couple of her friends, and they were all great. Uh-huh. They were fighting on stage, but it was fun to watch. <laughs> they were fighting on stage. <laughs> Bridget Tatum was there, and she was uh, really funny, too. Yeah. Like, that whole crowd, because they're like the yeah, original. Yeah, I got them all to sign one of my guitars. Oh, that's good. It's very cool. Yeah. That's very awesome. cool. They were the big country rockers. And yeah. They were all there. And they, yeah. You know? Yeah, I love it. What an experience. And we tried to get Scott to go that night. Yeah, I was like, and I was booked. and uh, So we don't talk about it much, but I have a little history <laughs> with Gretchen. And uh, yeah. though she doesn't, you know, that's a whole other story. But anyway. <laughs> but you played guitar uh, in your band for a little I while. I did. Yeah. Keys and guitar for a little bit, way back in the beginning before she had a record deal. And, mm. and so, but uh, she uh, she's a generational voice. Uh, they She's got an incredible range that, that I I've, I've rarely hear. And and so you know, being able to be around her, perform with her for a little bit, and mm-hmm. and just to be around that, I was I was always just jaw dropping. Even even being on stage like right here next to her, yeah. she hit these notes that were just uh, otherworldly, and I just was like, where does that come from? I love her; she's awesome. Yeah, and yeah. and I, four hour nights never sang out a key. It's incredible. Her the control of her voice is amazing. But the reason I say that it's generational, she did change sort of the trajectory of music for a little bit. And the first time in many years that I heard someone that reminded me of that ability or or had that potential was Brooklyn. Wow. I had not wow. I had not heard that in I praise. years. And I and there's a lot of talent out there. I don't want to downplay all right. the talent that's in this town. There's incredible talent. Incredible. But yeah. there's just certain elements of ability that some right. some have, some don't. God given. Yeah, God given. Brooklyn has that, like Thank Gretchen. So absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's why when you know mm-hmm. when I heard you sing, I thought, man, that sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> it's got a thing. It's got a ring to it. Uh, and, and so that's why I feel it's generational. I feel right. for you, it's, it's like the next potential generation where you'll yeah. change the trajectory of music. I, no pressure. Thank you. No, no pressure. I mean, none of us know the future, but that's the first time I felt that yeah. in Thank a long you. time working with many artists. Absolutely. You're, you are very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you for singing like that. Dang. Thank you for complimenting me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We've got so much more to uh, listen to. We've got some songs that we're going to play that you've recorded. But I want to take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to take a little different direction. So uh, stick with us. We're just, just a real short break. You're listening to The Songwriter Connection with Dave oh, Linehan. Find us on Facebook and YouTube at The Songwriter Connection Podcast. And find Dave at the DaveConnection.com. Now back to the show with your host, Dave Linehan. Brutal hot day here in Nashville, isn't it? <laughs> it's a little warm. Is the air conditioner uh, working okay for you? I'm doing pretty good. 
<laughs> pretty warm. It's okay. It's like a hundred degrees here in Nashville today. <laughs> That's your August. Yeah, it just turned August here. That we're, the day we're recording it. You're listening. If you're listening on the day that it's released, it's September 20th. That's how far in advance we are now. It's wow, uh, good. it's just a good a good thing. We're uh, really happy to have a Brooklyn Summer with us and Scott Barrier and Brooklyn's mom Annie, who is just <laughs> amazing. Um, and I want to just remind you to hit that like and subscribe if you're listening, especially on YouTube, because it does help. We are distributed everywhere in the world by Red Circle. I don't mention them or thank them enough. Uh, but they're the ones that make it all possible. So, uh, Annie, I, one of the things that, that you and I talked about recently, um, and I think about as a parent, uh, if your child is into sports, okay, let's say they want to play hockey. Well, there's a lot of investment involved. You're talking about skates. They're not cheap. And you got pads and all that stuff. And you got to, you know, um, there's a lot of time involved in taking the kids to and for the, the game. It's It's kind of... It, there's kind of an equivalency there to if your child wants to, to get into music, isn't there? It's it It's is. not cheap, is it? In fact, nobody knows this. I don't think I've even told Scott this, but we've moved four times. Four times? Four times. Um, wow. And Brooklyn's always lived in a middle-class neighborhood. Uh-huh. But we grew up in Silicon Valley. So yeah. when kindergarten started, uh-huh. her music lessons at five and a half, Wow. Started at one hundred and thirty-five dollars an hour. Mm. So today they're two hundred and fifty dollars an Whew. hour. Wow! And that's not wow. recording music. That's not buying the new guitar. I mean, yeah. it's always guitars aren't something. cheap either. Yeah. Mm. But when she turned fourteen, everything mm-hmm. changed. It did. Um, because now, I think she went from having a lot of fun to where she had to get really serious. Mm-hmm. And I think right now we're trying to get back to fun. And kind yeah. of starting back to what brought you into country music to begin with. I got you. Because you start going down different lanes and trying all sorts of things. And it's like, wait a minute, but what do you love? And I think she's been thinking about that the last couple of weeks. I uh, I used to run this broadcast school, Ohio Center for Broadcasting. And I always just tell my students, you know, um, find out what you're passionate about. You know, find it, find what it is, because mm-hmm. that's special to you. And that's going to be your niche. And if you find what you're passionate about and you and you invest in that with all your heart, you know, you can't go wrong. And I think that is what you've done, Brooklyn, because I know that you're very passionate about your music. And, I am. <laughs> in every aspect. And what I also love, Annie, as you mentioned, it, she is such a fast learner. And Scott can attest because oh, you've given her guitar lessons, man, right? really fast. They're yeah. one of the fastest uh, retentions of melody I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah, uh, you you get it. I mean, I play it once and you sing it back to me, and then you got it locked. It's incredible. That's, Thank you. That's a steel trap mind of yours. It's mm-hmm. amazing. We can't <laughs> give up because she won't give up. And we would have thought in nine years she would have given up, or you know, got tired, or mm-hmm. I can't do this. Never. <laughs> so her parents, we want to give up. But. She doesn't burn out, right? <laughs> but yeah. she doesn't burn out. Right. That's good. Yeah, that's and, and I hope you never do. Because you're having fun. I watch you. You look like you really have a blast fun. on stage. Good. Yeah. I'm having fun right now. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you are. Yeah. Living so. the life. It's great. Living yeah. the life. <laughs> Living the dream. That's right. <laughs> well, let's play another song. You know, you've, you've, the other nice thing is uh, you talk about community, but you, you've had a chance to write with some really good songwriters. Lance and and, uh, and Michael J. and Scott Barrier and Justin Love. But then there's Kirsty Manna. Christy Manor wrote the song uh, Austin and has been on this podcast, her and her husband, Bill. And um, a guy that writes with, with Kirsty a lot, Billy, Billy D, I call him. Oh, yeah. Bill D. Luigi. Yeah, Bill D. Luigi. Yeah, Bill D. Bill D. Bill. Yeah, Bill D. Yeah, He's and, great. Yeah, he is awesome. And, and Erica Lotso. Uh, love her. You, you love her, too. <clears throat> so I want to play one of these uh, songs that you wrote with, with Bill. Um, you want to do Cowboy Killer or, or Kicking It Country? Well, since we started with Do It Now, let's just keep going back in time. So let's do Cowboy Killer. Let's do Cowboy Killer. So Makes tell sense. us a little bit about this song. You know, Cowboy Killer, yeah, I, w- I was right. I wrote it with Bill DeLuigi and Erica Latza. And Erica, okay. People. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And whose idea? And how did no, it was it? originally Erica's idea. She has such great ideas. She really does. She's great. She Blues lets, on the blacktop was her idea. She lets you be mm-hmm. edgy, yeah. you know. And she mm-hmm. does. And she has mm-hmm. that edge. She's yeah. great. She was recently the queen of the parade in, in, yeah. in, in Mount Airy at the Mayberry <laughs> Festival. It's yeah. so cool. Oh, that's awesome. we got to get her back on the show. So we're going to do Cowboy Killer. So this is Brooklyn Summer on the Songwriter Connection Podcast. It's raining on the pavement on a corner and 
outside. There's a lonely desperado with a ladder in his hand. They say the marble rats are gonna take him to his grave. But cowboy killer is my name. Cowboy killer. I'm glad I'm not a cowboy. <laughs> that needs a music video. It does need a bu- music video. Um, Martin? <laughs> hey, talk. You know, let's talk. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to say, I love Erica's backup so much on that song. She did so Was that Erica singing yeah. in the backup? Yeah. Wow, that She's is so great. great. We just asked her today, can you be a backup on every song? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, Book her. Gorgeous Book it. Yes. <laughs> You know, in a she lesson does. behind this song, uh, it ends with a tag and uh, tag. Scott, explain what that is. Well, ta- well, there are a couple of different types of tags. Sometimes they'll, they'll put one right at the end of a chorus, and they'll just have a little something else to say, uh-huh. uh, just a little extra information. Lengthen- lengthens the chorus a little bit, gives a little extra spice or color. I love uh, that. The other type of tag is some is you took take something from earlier in the song and you tag it right. to the end of the song. It's a it's a, a kind of a, a older style traditional way of doing things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes and, and it worked and it seemed to work in this case. Oh, yeah. um, sometimes you're like, oh, you didn't need to do that at all. But right. uh, but yeah, so those are the two forms of tags that that. People will use toward the end of a song. Now, the next time you hear a tag, you'll know. Yeah. And think about it. I, for me, I love it when you've got a, a strong visual first line of a song. It's raining on the corner, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Mm-hmm. It, it's so good, it draws you in. Why not end the song with that? And uh, so, and you tagged it with that. And I like that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well done. <laughs> er- Erica was at our kitchen table yesterday, and she just has a book and a page. Uh-huh. of all of these cool things. Yeah. Like, I was like, wow, these are good ideas. I remember, a little I remember, hook, her hook book? Her hook book, yeah, yeah. I remember having her on the show, and we've got to get her back on here real soon. She, she loves to use the tag. 
and she used the tags a lot. I want to hear about Blues on the Blacktop. Because you do? She's now singing this song wherever she goes. All of a sudden, it's her new favorite song again. Oh, wonderful. Well, good. I it's always love my song. It's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Again, we sat around this dining room table. It was Erica and um, and Scott and I. Yes. And uh, Erica goes, I don't have this... She goes, I don't have this idea called Blues on a Blacktop. And she starts this jam, and we're going, uh, like that. Yeah, I like that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. That's cool. She had a couple That's lines, awesome. and off we ran. Yeah, so. Yes. Uh, set me off like a copper top kettle. <laughs> Whose line was that? That was amazing. That was me. Oh, that was you? That thought, was my line. I thought that was me, too. Yeah. And well, I was like, keep those four we chrome wheels. It. We did. We did. We collaborated. Yeah. came up to chrome it. chrome wheels turning. Maybe that was just got buried. That was... <laughs> Good too. Could be. We were trying to get those visuals. So yeah. yeah. Well, let's listen yeah. to that. This blues on the blacktop, man. <laughs> Brooklyn summer. This is back when you were just what twelve? Twelve. You're twelve. Turns out love is a silver tongue devil. Set me up like a copper top kettle. Brooklyn Summer, 12 years old at the time. And with mono. <laughs> and with mono. That's right. As she recorded that, she was singing feeling well. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Oh, my God. How did you get through that? I managed. You yeah. managed. You know, I just uh-huh. plowed through it. I drove through it. Yeah. Yeah, tough. I get wow. nervous because I heard once you've had that, if you, if you get really stressed out, uh-huh. it can come back through stress. But I'm like, uh-huh. it must not because mm. I can't. Yeah. Imagine being under the stress you are and why yeah. you'd want to be. <laughs> I'm just too cool for mono. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Brooklyn, has it been stressful for you these last two years? Is it- you know, sure, it's been stressful. But honestly, if you just think of it like, you know, sure, it's stressful right now. But eventually, it's just going to get less and less stressful. And it's just mm-hmm. going to get more and more fun over time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hear you. What, what are the sources of, of stress? What, what stresses you out? People. <laughs> well, you, you know what? What do you ever do? Here you comes the no filter. Uh huh. Well, that's okay. You know, I imagine, and 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 you know, when you when you see somebody in this town, it, it does take a community. It, it does. And oh, yeah. uh, when we talk about all boats rise to that, but there are <laughs> there are people that will. Well, you get a little, you get a little notoriety. So I want to be your friend. 
I want, I'm going to be your friend and I want to write with you. And right. You get that all the time. People oh, want to yeah. pull on your sleeve. Come over here. Yeah. I, I want, I want your attention. <laughs> hey, let's be friends. Hey, can you get me into this place? Uh, we should write sometime. Mm. Yeah. I want to play the local. <laughs> I want to play the listening room. Yeah. And I, is, is that a source of stress? Yeah. Yeah. I know, Annie, oh, you've had know. to change your number a few times, right? Oh, I change yeah. my number every six months. Uh-huh. Probably yeah, I have in my, to. Too. In my phone, I got any new, Annie's new, new. Annie's new, new, new. But, um, <laughs> That's yeah. true. I've got that, too. They're stacked in my phone as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, All you know, numbers. people don't agree with me. And I've even heard Michael J. say, you're her mother. You need to make the decisions. But mm. I've always let Brooklyn make the decisions. Good. Believe it or not, she's never made a dumb, big decision since she was in <laughs> kindergarten, <laughs> literally. And if, well, I'm, a smart make, girl. if I'm making smart. her yeah, decisions true, true. and she yeah. doesn't say something wacky, <laughs> she's never going to be happy if her mom's telling her what to do all the time. Yeah. I mean, I do tell her to practice. You know, she nodded her head, so I guess she's agreeing. Yeah, she won't agreeing. clean her room. We know that. <laughs> she's like, but, yeah. My mother got to practice. <laughs> but she, she does make good decisions. She's in. Yeah. She's going to be a sophomore in high school a year and a half, maybe two years early. And wow. She's, wow. she's That's got great, a Brooklyn. B plus average. And so That's I feel great. like she's doing so many things right. Yeah, you are. And, and so are you. And, and, and Emerge, do you both work together on your socials? Because you yes. are amazing on it's the socials. It's her dad, too. It's really? A, and, and it's Jay all three well. of you. It's ah. a team effort. My twin brother, Jay. <laughs> I didn't know he had it in him. <laughs> Actually, some of those things. you want to hear something? I don't yeah. know if everyone wants to hear this. But oh. more, if you get a like, that's from dad. Yeah. If you get a comment, that's from Brooklyn. Uh-huh. If you see a really awesome story, that's me. <laughs> but, so now we know. But lately, have you guys seen where she's running in like Tom Cruise? Yes. I've been so, adorable. That, that was fun. And yeah. I told her, she's like, like Mom, doing? I'm kind of shy, business. but I have to be on social yeah. media. I'm like, well, let's just do it. So we're trying to do more. <laughs> yeah. And do she's trying to talk a little bit more. <laughs> do it now. So. Oh, that had to be a blast. <laughs> Tell me. You're doing old time rock and roll. That's great. <laughs> but I like Sliding she's finally it. starting to make fun of herself a little bit because that cuts the seriousness. Yeah, a little it, it, bit. And that I does imagine. that does translate well to an audience when you have fun, especially with absolutely. I, yeah, what's seriously. music without fun? It, it, really? That's a very good point, right? What there. did you say it was? Boozik. Boozik. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you find at the honky tonks downtown. So. You know, she's been hanging Boozik. around. Boozik. She's been hanging around. Scott and Michael J. when she starts talking like this, because we're like, her dad and I don't I have started. that. Yeah, we're a comedy humor. comedy show. It's true. Either Absolutely. a very Guilty. dry sense of humor, like ooh, that's kind of mean, or, or just really out there. <laughs> Weird and sarcastic. That's us. Oh. <laughs> but I'm glad she's having fun, and I'm glad she can find people she loves and people she trusts mm-hmm. outside of the family. Yeah, yeah. Because that's I, I really too. important. Yeah. No. You're, you're getting lots of offers now. People want to promote you. Um, oh, yeah. You're getting interest from big labels. I mean, one, I'm not going to say, but they're coming to watch you this weekend. Yeah, and I'm really excited. <laughs> no, that's good. That's Are you cool. nervous about that? You know, I kind of, you'll, you'll always have a little bit of nervousness deep down, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. What I've always pointed, it's yeah, good to cool. have a little a bit of the yeah. nerves because it keeps you sharp, makes yeah. you sharp. Yes, you don't. Know, you're going to suck. <laughs> exactly right. She's always said, I work better under pressure. There you go. Yeah. That's, then you're in the right business. You get a little bit of that adrenaline flow. Yeah. And I crack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't Do you feel, I, I feel like I, I think sh, I'm focused. I'm more focused and, and, and you're, you just feel sharper, don't you? I know. I feel like, like adrenaline, it kind of just makes it even more like. Yeah. Fun to watch on stage because you're so jumpy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you've really worked on your stage presence, haven't you? I have been. I've been working on that. <laughs> Has That's anybody awesome. helped you with that? And My mom. Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're going to see cheerleader moves. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You were but, cheerleader? That's great. Were you? I, I was yeah. for a really long time. Really? Okay. Really? All righty. Doesn't Excellent. surprise me. It's kind of yeah. funny. I wouldn't do it without her. And you know what? I, I went through some of the same things Brooklyn did when she was little. I bet. Yeah. I remember making the USA cheerleading team and nobody no. told me because everyone from high school, everybody wanted to make that team, oh. you know, and nobody told me. So I didn't get to go to the initial 
trial. But wow. you see things like that with Brooklyn since she was in kindergarten at her first talent mm-hmm. show. And those are the things that are hard to watch. But see her overcome it uh-huh. and knowing that she's been put through so much that I think she just lets everything go over the top of her head now. Mm-hmm. And I think she's got, Let's like you off. guys, she has a... A small, close-knit group of people she can always come to. And, you know, I noticed she's coming back to that for writing. Mm. Like, you know? You, you You can venture out a little bit, but she always comes back home. Mm. You know? Um, if you had any advice to, to up-and-coming writers in your 14 years of age wisdom. <laughs> but, you know, you've learned a lot in the past yeah. couple yeah. of years. I've learned a lot from people. What would you say? What would you tell them? Do it now. (laughs) (laughs) Do it now and don't trust everybody. Don't trust everybody. How do you know who to trust is what I want to know. You 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 don't. don't. You You just have to. You know, if it sounds too too good to be true, it's too good to be true. (laughs) I I, I agree with you. And and that's another good point is taking your time. And no matter who you are out right. there. Yeah, because, you know, like, I'll know people yeah. for years, and, like, they'll say, like, yeah, you want to sign this, you want to yeah. do this? Like, I'll only, I have to know you first, because, yeah. like, people change. People yeah. change. And and you see that over time. You see the patterns in people. And mm-hmm. so nobody's perfect. You know, Nobody but, is perfect. But still, mm-hmm. you know, over, and that's why you, know, you hear, I heard that a lot when I came here was, you know, if you're looking at getting uh, sort of, I was going to say in bed. That's probably not the thing. <laughs> so if you're looking to sign a contract with with some like a major company, management, anything, yep. they I've heard it over and over. They call that slow dating. Mm. I think that's the funny way wow. as somebody put it. But the, it's a dating process where you want to take your time uh, to find out if it's really going to work in the long run. And mm-hmm. if you do decide to go with them, if you're going to have a good relationship that's not going to be rocky and drama-filled. True. And also, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about the labels. I'm talking about yeah. the big management companies or yeah. managers. Absolutely. That, the business relationships I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. And so so, uh, so you got to, like, take your time. I've, told, I've been told... Uh, by different people in the industry, it can be up to two, maybe three years of Mm -hmm. going back and forth to really see if this thing is going to work Mm -hmm. and to see what the patterns are over that time. And and rushing in just like love can be sort of a a really bad end. uh, (laughs) And I agree with you. And and you know what? In, in, In three, four years, five years, you're going to be just as talented more, yes, actually, than you are now. Yep. And, and and so, yeah, and and you don't seem to be the kind that that wants to rush it, uh, that would rush no. into anything. Yeah. She doesn't rush anything. And we were talking the other day, and I told her, think about it like, whenever you're on Broadway, you want to go to the ice cream shop. Yeah, you never know which ice cream to pick. So mm. you take that little <laughs> spoon, and you're like, can I have a bite of this one? Yeah. Hmm. The next time she has a bite of a different flavor, and mm-hmm. you just got gotcha. Well, that's exactly that. how you want to be with with the major labels, with labels and the publishers, and all that. Yeah. Yep. Just like check them out, mm-hmm. see if it's going to work. Watch what they do over time. See if it still tastes a little sweet, mm-hmm. and Absolutely. then you'll know. Yep. I think that's a great metaphor. And then you'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you'll find cream. the perfect one, yes. mint chocolate chip, and then you get it every single time. That's right. <laughs> that's you right. need to find your mint chocolate chip. That's what you need to find. <clears throat> That's funny. You know, I, I remember interviewing... Um, no BS. No BS. This is not BS. Yeah. I interviewed a young, uh, a great artist, and uh, he went on to be really, really, uh, really big. And um, But he was first offered his first deal when he was 15 years old. And he was living in California. He was into surfing, and he awesome. was a great guitar player, and he was playing a lot of clubs even before he was old enough to get in. And a big label came and offered him a deal. And his dad sat down with him and said, I know you want to do this. But I think you need to wait. And, you know, he said the same thing. I think in four or five years, you're going to be just as talented, probably mm-hmm. more than you are right now. And I think you're going to be better off just finishing school, keep doing what you're doing. And if that dream is still alive then, and you still, you're you going to get more offers. And, and you will. And he did. And he became a big star. Um, I don't want to mention who he is. But, I why not? But Billy that. Lee, Billy Lee wrote it, <laughs> one of his songs. <laughs> but, but okay, so but anyway. Well, uh, I mean, if we're talking about big stars, I mean, uh-huh. Cody Johnson's a great example. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where he really took his time mm-hmm. uh, until he was good and ready, and felt like he was in a good position to call the shots on his career as well. Yeah, and so talk about really being patient. I mean, that oh, was yeah. a oh, lot Cody of Johnson years. 
Yeah, he really is. That he would not sign anything. He built his career the way he wanted it built. Exactly. To the music he wanted to do. That's right. Uh, you know, and so so a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people at some point were like, "This guy's never going to sign." Mm. And so <laughs> would mm-hmm. be my guess. Yeah. And but eventually he did when he he realized he had hit the top. Everything he could do as an artist, and he was already famous out of Texas and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but to get. That to the next sort level. of that radio play and that bigger yeah. exposure, he knew it was time to sign. Yeah. But when he was ready, and that's way longer than anybody I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about patience and like yeah. doing it your way. Look at him today. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just he's, absolutely huge. He's award winner. He's yeah. he's one of the top on the charts and keeping it music. country, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and so every single bit of it. Yeah, yeah. Lainey absolutely. Wilson waited a long time too, oh, yeah. and she was living in a trailer. Yeah, yeah, in yeah absolutely. In somebody's backyard yeah. and just. Wouldn't give up and yeah, riding out the tornado. She said, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. so that's the whole point. Is here, there's no rush. Mm-hmm. You've already got the foundation. You've been doing this since, well, since you were five, re- really, realistically. Mm. And so you've got a lot of time put in. You, yeah. You've been through the fire over and over again. So that's made you tough and ready for this business. It has. But you don't have to rush. You, you do not. Don't have to rush. That could be a good song. Ooh. All right, we'll hold on to it. Mm-hmm. Been through the fire. Nobody heard that. No, songwriters out there, we got it. It's ours. You got it. You got already, it. Already on it. Yeah, already writing. <laughs> We're writing that right now. We'll By the time you hear this, it's already written. Already done. <laughs> yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so um, <laughs> this next song is Kicking It Country. We're, we're going to kick it country for you. And another one with Ooh. Bill DeLuigi, right? And was it Erica too? That was uh, Bill DeLuigi, Scott, Scott Barrier. And Scott Barrier. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about this. Because you know what this is? I think this is so Brooklyn because it's got that 90s feel, but with a little edge. I love, I love 90s country. And it's back, right? Yeah. And yeah. you've been playing this 90s country thing at the Live Oak yeah, here in I Nashville. Love, yeah. Uh, so, it, yeah. Scott, tell us well, about it this. Well, it was Bill's idea when we walked in, and he played a little bit, and we're like, really, really like that. Mm. And so it, I really felt it reflected your personality anyway, because it's fun, it's light. We get a couple throws in there that are kind of funny in the lyrics. And, uh-huh. and it was it was just re- a lot of fun to write. It was What's really, it fun to write? Yeah, I bet really it was. fun. It yeah. was just one of those writes where it flowed out, and we were having a good time and laughing, and oh, yeah. coming up with crazy lines. <laughs> so much fun. So yeah, much fun. and you have a lot of fun when you when you sing this live. I love watching you sing it live. So. It's fun. It's really fun. Yeah. All right, let's kick it country. <laughs> it's Brooklyn Summer Songwriter Connection Podcast. Good time off. We got two steppers, long neck 
that's some awesome guitar in that. Is that John Willis? <laughs> no. No, who's doing that? You know what? Smith. <laughs> who is it? Smith. Smith Curry? Well, Smith did the steal. Oh, my gosh. Uh, That's awesome. Gosh, who was it? <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah, I feel so <laughs> bad. It was Smith's guy. It was Smith's guy. Smith's one guy. of Smith Curry's uh, ah. A-list players Why they I hired. Wow. Uh, we're David. blanking. His name was David. I, I think David. so. I feel so bad. Oh, that was me. <laughs> David. I'm a David. <laughs> Yeah, in my dreams. I love that. There's so many cool lines in that. There's Everybody and their mother. Was that, were you thinking about your mom? Was that your line? Annie, you're in that Everybody song. Did you know that? Mother. All I know is that the best songs come out of a co-write they haven't been prepared for. Mm. And they've been really fast. Yeah. Because that one was fast. Because you guys yeah. can grind sometimes, but it seems mm-hmm. like the fast ones are like... Yeah, we were, yeah well, yeah. we were really feeling that one. Hi. Well, there's Juliet. Juliet Hi, decided to join the podcast, yeah. my cat. Another well, member of the... The musical cat. Yeah, the crew there we here. Go. I thought I put you away. <laughs> like That's out in funny. the porch, you got out, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, Couldn't help it. Wanted to be in the middle of it's it. It's all about Juliet. Yeah. So, anyway. So, so, yeah, for kicking a country. <laughs> so, for kicking a country. She wanted to kick a country, too. Yeah, kicking a kitty. She, how come you didn't mention Juliet in that song? Kitty's kicking a country. <laughs> kicking a country. We've been kicking a country with uh, Brooklyn Summer, Scott Barrier, Annie... So good to have you. Thank you. You, you guys rock. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to coin the two things. I'm trying to coin the first. Barrier! Whenever Scott yeah. sings a song, go, Barrier! It's a thing. And the other one, I'm your biggest fan, and I'm, they're Swifties, right? I'm a summy. Oh, that's so cute. A summy. I'm a summy. <laughs> Why not? Or it could be like a brookie. Like, you know, a that, brookie. You know I'm that, a brookie. Yeah, that awesome sort of brownie cookie you're, thing. You're oh, like the I like that better. I'm a brookie. I, oh, you can, you wait, can wait, sell wait, those? Wait, wait, That's about, why he's a song. What about a BSer? A BSer, like both well, of Brooklyn Summer. <laughs> BSer. Like, what's your tour going to be called? The No BS Tour. The No BS Tour. <laughs> Uh, the only one BS is yeah, Brooks, that's Brooklyn fun. Summer. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for joining us today, Brooklyn. All the best. Man, Thanks love you, girl. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this intimate glimpse into the world of songwriting and found inspiration in the stories shared by our talented guests. Remember, the magic of music lies not only in the notes and chords, but in the emotions and experiences woven into every lyric. Until next time, keep listening, keep creating, and keep the melodies alive.